Good afternoon and welcome to the September 2018 National School Lunch Program webinar. My name is Heather Bloom and I'm a coordinator with the Child Nutrition Programs. I work with the National School Lunch Team to conduct trainings through an administrative review and training grant and I work with the NSLP team to conduct reviews. Please remember to track the time spent viewing this webinar towards professional development standards. These hours will meet USDA professional standards requirements. We will discuss topics that fall under the key areas of Nutrition 1000, Operations 2000, Administration 3000, and Communications 4000. We will start today's webinar discussing the policy memos that were released recently and then move on to program reminders. We will end the webinar with success stories and time for questions. We only have a few policy memos to discuss today. SP 18 2018 addresses the continuation of flexibilities allowed last year. The following three flexibilities apply to school year 2018-2019 only. USDA is currently developing a final rule that will address the availability of flexibilities beyond school year 2018-2019. Milk operators in the National School Lunch Program, NSLP, and the School Breakfast Program, SBP, will have the option to offer flavored, low-fat, 1% fat milk as part of a reimbursable meal to students in grades K through 12. Flavored, low-fat, 1% fat milk may be provided to special milk program and child care and adult food program participants six years of age and older. No demonstration of hardship will be required. Schools will also be able to offer flavored, low-fat milk as a competitive beverage for sale. Remember, children served the CACFP meal pattern who are younger than six years old may not have flavored milk. Additionally, if you are considering serving flavored 1% milk, please remember to complete a whole grain rich flavored milk exemption form available in download forms in My Idaho CMP and email it to the state agency. Whole grains. State agencies will continue to have the discretion to grant whole grain rich exemptions to school food authorities, SFAs, that can demonstrate hardship in procuring, preparing, or serving specific products that are acceptable to students and compliant with the whole grain rich criteria. SFAs that receive exemption approval must offer at least half of the grains as whole grain rich. Please refer to SP 33 2016 for guidance on the exemption process. Sodium. Sodium Target 1 will continue as the regulatory limit in the NSLP and SBP. SP 19 clarifies regulations that water made available to students in the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program shall not compete with the milk requirement. Schools can offer water pitchers and cups on lunch tables, a water fountain, or a faucet that allow students to fill their own bottles or cups with drinking water. Although potable water may be, must be available to students during the meal service, it's not part of the reimbursable meal and students are not required to take water. Bottled water may be available to students on the serving line, but water should be offered after the student has the option to select milk and signage should be clear that water is not a meal component. If the school is not participating in offer versus serve, OVS, a reimbursable meal must contain milk in addition to the other required meal components. If the school participates in OVS, the, school, the student has the option to decline milk. Whenever choices are available, meal identification signs that instruct students on how much food may be selected from each meal component are required. SP 20 2018 clarifies the guidance for state agencies regarding the 60 day claim submission and 90 day reporting requirements for child nutrition programs, which was released in April 25, 2018. FNS issued this addition to consolidate and clarify longstanding law, regulation, and guidance regarding claim submission and reporting timeframe requirements for child nutrition programs, 
including the timeline for which final claims must be submitted to the state agency, in which circumstances exceptions and adjustments are allowed, and the state agency's reporting requirements. FNS would like to highlight the following changes included in this guidance, as it one, extends the ability to withhold payments and circumstances outlined in this guidance to all child nutrition programs, not just school meal programs. Two, provides clarification to deadlines that fall on Saturday, Sunday, or a federal holiday. In cases where a deadline falls on one of these days, the due date is the next business day. Three, per the SFSP Simplified Cost Accounting Final Rule, it includes new SFSP flexibilities for combined claims. Four, revisions to program requirements after the 90-day deadline now require an explanation in the remarks section of the report. The guidance provides examples in attachment B of this guidance. Five, any significant variations between the 30-day and 90-day report now require an explanation in the remarks section of the report. The guidance provides examples to this in examples attachment C. And six tolerance levels have been removed. FM 03-2018 announces an increase to the threshold for micro purchases under federal financial assistance from $3,500 to $10,000. It also increases the threshold for simplified acquisitions to $250,000 for all federal agencies that award grants and competitive cooperative agreements for our food nutrition services programs unless precluded by regulatory requirements the changes are effective immediately and can be applied to federal assistance awards made in fiscal years 2017 and 2018 to clarify the definition of micro purchase think of a good or service that has a relatively low value and does not require the government to follow the more restrictive procedures in place for purchases or contracts of a higher value. These purchases still need to be necessary, reasonable, and allocable and need to be distributed equitably among qualified suppliers. Simplified acquisitions are small purchases that use simple and informal procurement methods to get goods, supplies, or other property that fall below the established threshold. Though they are simplified, these purchases must still be made in a competitive manner. We will now move on to program reminders. This is an important reminder that the due date for the submission of the 2018 Equipment Grant application is Thursday, September 27th, 2018, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. USDA grant funding provided Idaho with $132,068 to allocate to school food authorities to purchase equipment for the use in national school lunch programs based on a competitive grant process. The grants will allow SFAs to purchase equipment needed to serve healthier school meals, improve food safety, improve the overall energy efficiency of school food service operations, and expand access to school meals. As with all federal grant funds, procurement regulations at 7 CFR Part 210.21 and 2 CFR Part 200.317 through 326 applies, and equipment competitively procured using these grant funds must be necessary, reasonable, and allocable. SFAs must follow all federal, state, and local procurement laws when purchasing equipment with grant awards. All awards are contingent upon available USDA funds. The grant application is available on the CMP website. Read through the application to ensure submission of a complete packet of information. A checklist is provided on page 13 of the application for this purpose. Remember to register for the Procuring Local Foods training that will be held in Twin Falls on October 12th. This training will be conducted by the Institute for Child Nutrition and answers questions about how to source and purchase local foods. Make sure you are tracking food quantities so that you have information available when you go to place your first order in February in the Web-Based Supply Chain Management or Web SCM system for ordering USDA foods. 
please remember to use the CMP training portal. There are many trainings available covering a wide range of school meal topics. Newly added is a manual meal counting training that was released earlier in September. Be sure to register for the courses that indicate they were updated for the 2018-2019 school year. Additionally, be on the lookout for the training on the new USDA Foods process coming in the next couple months. Register for courses at the CMP training portal at https colon backslash backslash cmp.idiglearning.net backslash. If your district operates the special milk program, then be sure to complete the online SMP training in the CNP training portal. Additionally, there is an SMP training sheet that may be used to document additional staff training, such as kindergarten teachers, that hand out the milk and record milk counts in the classroom. Completing the SMP course in the training portal is required of one person per SMP sponsor, who will then facilitate the training of others and may use the sheet for training and or documentation. The person who completes the online course is to generate a certificate of completion to retain on file. Make sure your food service director has had eight hours of food safety training within the last five years to meet the professional standards compliance requirements. This could be accomplished by taking the ICN's Serving Safe Foods in Schools online class for free. Make sure to download the newly released Buy American Exception form and from the download form section in My Idaho CMP to keep documentation on hand and for any products you serve that do not meet the Buy American provision. Now is the time of year to start thinking about how to implement your wellness policies. While you may or may not be involved in school wellness efforts, USDA requires that each local education agency evaluate their wellness policy at least once every three years on the extent to which schools are in compliance with the district policy, the extent to which the local wellness policy compares to model local wellness policies, and the progress made in attaining the goals of the local wellness policy. So make sure to take credit for any healthy practices or wellness activities going on in your schools. That's it for program reminders. We'll now move on to success stories and updates. And this month, we wanted to share the best practice of forming a student advisory council. The Gooding School Nutrition Program has a child nutrition advisory council with middle school students, high school students, and even a principal in their district and uses the input from these students to guide the menu development and food ordering process. Oftentimes the feedback from these students will help inform the decisions made by the Magic Valley Co-op when it comes to purchasing commercial products. So this is a beneficial practice both for school wellness efforts as well as program integrity and quality control and procurement. So good job, Gooding. Those are the success stories we have for this month. Does anyone have any questions at this time? Go ahead and use the text box on your screen to type your questions and I will answer them as they are entered. We do not currently have any questions at this time. So thank you for attending today's webinar. Please contact the Child Nutrition Programs at 208-332-6820 if you have any questions regarding information in this webinar. And please remember the accuracy of the information shared today is current only as of the recording date. The USDA may issue more guidance or further clarification regarding items discussed in today's webinar. Please note the civil rights statement shown here. The statement was issued December 2015 and ends with this institution is an equal opportunity provider. Your non-discrimination statement much, must match this statement. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you all and have a good day.